All right, guys, so today we are continuing in our theory of genetics, and we are going to start by watching a very cool TED Ed video, and then we will talk, explain who Gregory Mendel was and why he dealt with geese. Please work. There we go. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good, no, perfect words that make your writing sharp. These days, scientists know how you inherit characteristics from your parents. They're able to calculate probabilities of having a specific trait or getting a genetic disease according to the information they have from the parents and the family history. But how is this possible? To understand how traits pass from one living being to its descendants, we need to go back in time to the 19th century and a man named Gregor Mendel. Mendel was an Austrian monk and biologist who loved to work with plants. By breeding the pea plants he was growing in the monastery's garden, he discovered the principles that rule heredity. In one of the most classic examples, Mendel combined a purebred yellow-seeded plant with a purebred green-seeded plant, and he got only yellow seeds. He called the yellow color trait the dominant one, because it was expressed in all the new seeds. Then he let the new yellow-seeded hybrid plants self-fertilize, and in this second generation he got both yellow and green seeds, which meant that the green trait had been hidden by the dominant yellow. He called this hidden trait the recessive trait. From those results, Mendel inferred that each trait depends on a pair of factors one of them coming from the mother and the other from the father. Now we know that these factors are called alleles and represent the different variations of a gene. Depending on which type of allele Mendel found in each seed, we can have what we call a homozygous P, where both alleles are identical, and what we call a heterozygous P, when the two alleles are different. This combination of alleles is known as genotype, and its result, being yellow or green, is called phenotype. To clearly visualize how alleles are distributed amongst descendants, we can use a diagram called the Punnett square. You just place the different alleles on both axes, and then you figure out the possible combinations. Let's look at Mendel's P's, for example. Let's write the dominant yellow allele as an uppercase Y, and the recessive green allele as a lowercase Y. The uppercase Y always overpowers his lowercase friend, so the only time you get green babies is if you have two lowercase Ys. In Mendel's first generation, the yellow homozygous P mom will give each P kid a yellow dominant allele, and the green homozygous P dad will give a green recessive allele, so all the P kids will be yellow heterozygous. Then, in the second generation, where the two heterozygous kids marry, their babies could have any of the three possible genotypes, showing the two possible phenotypes in a three-to-one proportion. But even peas have a lot of characteristics. For example, besides being yellow or green, peas may be round or wrinkled. So we could have all these possible combinations, round yellow peas, round green peas, wrinkled yellow peas, and wrinkled green peas. To calculate the proportions for each genotype and phenotype, we can use a Punnett square, too. Of course, this will make it a little more complex. And lots of things are more complicated than peas, like, say, people. These days, scientists know a lot more about genetics and heredity, and there are many other ways in which some characteristics are inherited. But it all started with Mendel and his peas. His damn peas, exactly. And I probably have that on the recording, too. Oopsies. I have a challenge for all. It's okay. Um, let's hit escape. All right, if we go back to the PowerPoint. So yeah, this is Gregor Mendel. He was an Austrian monk in the 1860s, so he was basically training to be a priest. And he was hanging out in the monastery, and he really liked math. And he started growing peas. And part of the reason for peas is they self-pollinate. So if you look at this pea plant flower here, there's all of the stuff that makes peas. So basically the sperm and the egg, they're all enclosed in this part here and they never get out. Whereas this one, okay, so this is like a lily or something like that. Um, the wind could pollinate this, the, um, a bug, a bee could pollinate. So a bee could bring some pollen from a pollen is sperm in plants, could bring from a different plant and, and mix it and then you know you're getting all kinds of breeding but with peas it never happened because it was all enclosed in the little round part so it always self-fertilized so he always knew what was happening 
they couldn't get bugs in there and the wind didn't bring the pollen in, so he could really predict it. Um, it also helped that peas were cheap, they could eat them after, they grew pretty quick, they could probably get two, like he lived in Austria, so he could probably get a couple of ge uh, generations of peas in a year. And the things that he looked at, he looked at seven different traits. So this is from the video. There were yellow seeds and green ones, and they were round and wrinkled. And seed coat colors, lots of different things. It's not completely important, but just know that they looked at peas. And in humans, there are some genes that are easy to look at and easy to find whether or not you are recessive or have the dominant, have the dominant gene or the recessive genes. So one of them is a cleft chin. And now that everyone's wearing masks, we really can't tell, but somebody told me that's called a bum chin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so there you go. The widow's peak is whether you have your forehead, your hair goes, uh, I don't know if I have one. I don't think so. Well, maybe a little bit, I'm starting to go bald. But some people it's really, really noticeable, like that. Whether you've got dimples, what color hair, freckles, and eye color, and also whether your ears are free or not. So whether they connect, whether they connect at the bottom of your head or whether they're they're free. Oh, you're gonna everyone's gonna go look at themselves in the mirror today. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be looking at my son now. All right. Um I think we can stop there. I'm going to do it this way. So I am going to mention that we are looking at super simple examples in genetics. And I'm just going to scroll through a bunch of slides here because I know I saw it. It's going to get there. There. You specifically asked me about skin color the other day. So I thought of this slide. And there it's called polygenetic genetic inheritance. It's not important right now. But skin color is controlled by three different genes. And the more dominant genes you have, the darker your skin tone is going to be. So this is, um, these two girls are twins. Mm -hmm. And basically this one, mom and dad were both, um, had basically mixed heritage. Okay. So the one with the red hair basically got all the light genes from mom and all the light genes for dad. And she turned out really light, fair hair, red hair, or fair skin, red hair. Mm -hmm. And the sister obviously got some of the darker genes and the curly hair and stuff like that. All right, we're going to stop that and I'm going to switch to some notes. So you want to get some loose leaf up. I share. Here you go. Mm -hmm. But they probably, there's some mixed heritage in there. There you go. No, 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 no. All right. So, genetics part two. So, it was Gregor Mendel who was, people knew about that information before. Nobody had ever actually done the math behind it. So farmers knew that if you bred the best cattle to the best cattle, you'd get kind of, you know, good, you could pretty much predict the traits. Mm -hmm. Or if you bred a German shepherd to a German shepherd, you knew what the offspring were going to be like. But if you did a shepherd with a, I don't know, a poodle or something, it was hit or miss what you were going to get every single time. Yeah. So traits come in pairs. One is dominant and one is recessive. So the dominant one can mask the other.
So like brown hair, brown eyes. I can't remember what else was on there. Uh, freckles. Bum chin. Bum chin. Yes, thank you, bum chin. <laughs> I'll write it as cleft chin. Okay, so those are all dominant. So if you have one of those genes, you have it will show up. Recessive. Can be masked. And that's like blonde hair or red. Blue eyes. Uh, no freckles. No bum chin. I'm not going to write that. <laughs> and the dominant one always gets a capital. And the recessive. And no matter how weird it feels, you always use the same letter all the time. So if we use capital F for freckles, What are we going to use for no freckles? Um, little f. Yep. So these things are alleles. And that means different versions of the same gene. And allele is always a singular thing. So it's always one letter. And most of the time, you're going to come in pairs. Sometimes you'll get more than that, but I'm going to leave that for grade 12. We're just going to keep it simple. Okay. <laughs> now, a person always comes with two traits. So a person could have two traits, two genes for freckles. They could have one gene for freckle, or what's the other option, Sammy? Um, no one nope. Nope. Oh, well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, genes don't worry about order. Oh, okay. So big F and little f and little f and big F. Let me do it this way. No, it doesn't matter. And normally you put the capital one first because it is the um, dominant one. Oh, okay. So this top guy or girl, what do they look like? Definitely going to get freckles. They got freckles. <laughs> and here's where it gets weird. Guess what the next person has? Freckles. Yes, and they look exactly like the first one. So whether you have one dominant gene or two dominant genes, it still looks the same. You can't tell the difference. And then these guys have no freckles. I want to do a whole bunch of vocabulary all at the same time. So this top guy, purebred or hybrid? Do you think he's purebred? I think he's purebred. He is a purebred. Oops. Which other one is purebred? And no yes, this is good. So then what was the middle one? Oh, yeah, hybrid. Very good. And, 
And if you were talking for the most part, I used to okay, pre-COVID, uh, we definitely would have went to Agribition this year. And we go see the cattle and the bison and all sorts of things. And 90% of the time when I was talking to the farmers, you would be talking about purebreds. That's usually what they bring. Very seldom would they say hybrid. Often they'd say crossbred. So if they took two different breeds of cattle and put them together, they call it a crossbred. Okay. Occasionally, I've run into a farmer who appreciated that I was a science teacher and they use different words. And this is a new word for today, homozygous. And that's a fancy, sciencey way of saying purebred. <laughs> it is, it's pretty cool, homozygous. So whether it's freckles or no freckles, as long as it's purebred, it's called homozygous. Heterozygous, whoopsies, never mind, I just told you what the word was. Hetero. Means different. So homo is same. And honestly, the easiest way is probably what you're already thinking of, homosexual and heterosexual. <laughs> well, homosexual is like either kind of like two guys, two girls, it doesn't matter, it's two of the same, and heterosexual is one of each. So heterozygous is one of each. You're just gonna learn so much. Oh. Like, what? What okay. Is that? okay, we're <laughs> going to carry on. When you have the letters, those letters refer to genes, and they call this a genotype. It's easy to remember because it's letters, and the letters represent genes. So that's pretty cool. When you're talking about the words, we call these phenotypes. And I don't have a really good way to remember that other than the letters or the genes, and this is the other one. So phenotypes is what you see. So the phenotypes are having freckles or no freckles. The genotypes are capital F, capital F, capital F, little f, little f, little f. So there's three of those and two of those. Okay, so far, so far so good? Yeah. Excellent. Give me a chance here. All right, we're gonna practice a little bit and then we'll call it for today. So let's say we have a purebred person with freckles and they find a light, delightful person who's hybrid for freckles and they have kids. And the easiest way to figure out what the babies are gonna be like Is drawing something called a Punnett square. Now yeah, mine's kind of messy, but that's okay. In the video, they showed the one with 16 boxes in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have to do that. Okay. They took they even took that out of grade 12. Because it's kind of hard. And well, it's not that hard, it's just it's terrible to mark. <laughs> There's the truth. Yeah, but this, this little four by four square is pretty simple. So what we do, so let's say this is dad. It doesn't matter. But dad's going to make sperm, and some of the sperm are going to have capital F in it. 
what are the rest of the sperm going to have in them? No, look at dad. What, what, all he can, yeah, all dad can contribute is exactly. Mom, on the other hand, she can contribute a capital F. Some of the eggs will have the gene for freckles and some of the eggs won't. So the ones along the outside, these are the sperm and the eggs. And for me, I don't care. You could put the mom on top and the dad on the side. I think there's some, I don't know, like university or something. They might care where you put which one, but me, it doesn't matter. And now we're just going to put them together. So it's kind of like a multiplication table. So in this box, I'm going to put a capital F from there and a capital F from there. And then in this box, I'm going to put this one and this one. But truth is, it's not very exciting because it's exactly the same thing. What are you going to get in the bottom row? Um, they get the little. Yes. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Because dad's not very challenged. Well, dad's not. Huh. He doesn't have a lot of variety. He's got a freckle gene. That's it. Everybody, yeah. everybody gets freckle genes from me. So these are our genotypes. So genotypes of the babies. We have some that are two capital F and we have some that are capital F little f. Some are homozygous dominant and some are heterozygous. Now, phenotype, what do you see? No, what do you see? What do the babies look like? Oh, all freckles. They all got freckles. <laughs> so they can't tell by looking at a kid whether he's purebred freckle or hybrid freckle. They just got freckles. They all look the same. So, feeling okay with this? Yeah. One more. I want you to do, let's take one of these, kid, a hybrid freckly kid, and he finds a girlfriend, but she has no freckles. I would like you to do that cross in a Punnett square. That sounds good. Some of the babies don't have freckles this time. Okay, so did you get the same thing I did? And it doesn't, by the way, it doesn't matter if you did this and went like that. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and it makes absolutely no difference. Okay. <laughs> I got everything right. Cool. Yeah, I did it that way. <laughs> that's fine. Because in the end of it all, our genotypes, what different combinations of letters do we have this time in the babies? Okay, but tell me about the combinations, the different ones that we have. Okay, um, the big F and little F. Okay, so that's one genotype. What's the other one? Uh, little F and little F. Excellent. And then it's me, big F and little F, and then little F and little F. You're right. I don't want to write those. I'm just saying what they are. So they're there. <laughs> I would mark what you say completely right. Now, phenotype, what do they look like? 
Well, what does the one with capital F, lowercase f, look like? A hybrid. That's not telling me what it looks like. Freckles? No freckles. Um, freckles. Freckles. It's got a capital F. I don't care what else they have. They got freckles. Okay, what about the other one? The two lowercase f's? No freckles. Nice. All right, so tomorrow, tomorrow, I'm not going to give it to you for homework. Tomorrow, we are going to work on dun, 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 bikini bottom genetics. Okay. And it's just some practice on the stuff we're doing. And it's super, in okay, I don't know if it's interesting, but it's fun, it's pre-done, and it's a good practice. So that is it for science for today.